So the Mobile World Conference began today, and uh, this is basically the event that takes place uh, every year in Barcelona, Spain, where companies reveal their next flagship mobile phones uh, for the upcoming year. And I have decided to uh, start covering this event, and I've been following it for quite some time. It's not like this is anything new to me, you know, but I just never really covered it. And I always ask myself, oh, why, why don't I just cover this? You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of technology. I'm very passionate about, you know, especially mobile technology. And you guys know I'm very vocal about my, um, I guess, my preferences when it comes to mobile phones and the technology I'm looking for, as well as the innovation in terms of design, you know, that I really want all these manufacturers to take. So I put a, a poll up earlier, and uh, even though the poll is not over, as of this point, I'm going to bring up the specs here. As of this point, the Samsung Galaxy S7 is what most people um, are looking for or thought was cool. It was like the big flagship of the event. Uh, most, uh, the, actually, the second one was people thought it was pretty disappointing overall. About 33% of people who voted thought it was disappointing. 11% actually like the LG G5. And again, 56% thought that Galaxy S7 looked really cool. So I'm gonna go over what was announced here, as well as give my general thoughts and uh, things like that. All right, so we're gonna begin with the Samsung Galaxy S7. This was announced, you know, it's not anything new really. I mean, we all saw this was coming. Uh, Samsung unveiled the S7 flagship phone as well as the S7 Edge. And uh, the two phones are similar indeed, apart from, you know, one being that it's one's a little bit taller, as you can see, and one has a small, a, a curved screen on the sides of the edges. You know, the, um, we saw this with the six edge, you know, it's not anything really new in terms of design. And uh, the only thing I can really think of when, you know, looking at this phone is how similar it looks to every single other phone. I mean, I just want to show you guys, let's take a look at the timeline for the Galaxy S series. And just to show you guys, how drastically you know each phone came out in the beginning how differently they looked from one another and then coming into you know after basically the s3 how they just copied and pasted the design with it looking a little bit thinner maybe changing the back a little bit um but it being the same basic design all right let's take a look at this all right so we have the samsung galaxy s series it's a very fat very not not really attractive phone to be completely honest with you and uh but it was their first you know big flagship phone for the s line all right moving on to the galaxy s2 we got some big improvements here we got a, a bigger device overall and uh, some changes in the design overall of what the film looked like moving on to the Ga uh, samsung galaxy s3 this is where i jumped into the samsung galaxy s bandwagon i guess you can say this is where the most innovation took place uh, at this point in time, when the Samsung Galaxy S3 released, they were uh, pretty much making their way uh, to the top of the Android market. And uh, they were coming, basically coming up to the point of saying, you know what, no, we really got to get going. We really got to make it to the top here. We want to be number one. And the Galaxy S3 is the one that really put them on the map. It was kind of like the sleeper hit, I like the call, um, of that year. And you can just see a drastic change in um, difference between the Galaxy S2 and the S3. You can tell the difference between these two phones. Moving on a year later to the Galaxy S4, and here's where things get a little bit interesting, all right? You see basically zero design innovation. It's pretty much the same exact looking phone as the Galaxy S3, but it's a little bit bigger. You know, it's, um, it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit shinier, you know, different colors and things like that. All right, cool. Samsung Galaxy S5, we're still basically on this same path. Everything has the same standard home button in, in the, it's, it's not even that the home button's in the center. It's the fact that it's the same shape practically <laughs> as the home button that's on the S3. Again, it's bigger. They changed the back here on the S5 a little bit. So you got a nice, you know, kind of um, textured back, which is pretty cool. Samsung Galaxy S6, uh, this is where they kind of took out some features that a lot of people felt. Um, this is uh, basically took out the remo removable battery, excuse me. Uh, I don't know if there was SD card slot expansion, I'm not really sure. But this is like, you know, the, the latest phone that's out right now. And you can just see that in terms of the three years, there hasn't been a lot of design innovation. And now moving on to the Samsung Galaxy S7, and it looks basically the exact same as the S6 zero zero difference and this is a bit disappointing coming from the ceo of samsung because they actually appointed a new uh a new ceo of the company i believe 
and uh, he was basically saying, you know, hey, we wanted to, you know, really take a, um, you know, re- really redo our, our our Galaxy S line and really, you know, kind of innovate more. And I, I saw that he said that and it was like, oh, wow, this is freaking awesome. But if you actually dug in a little bit further, he said that basically this year's Samsung Galaxy S7 isn't going to be a drastic change at all. It's going to be next year's flagship, the S8, I guess, if you want to call it, that's going to be a real big design innovation. But just to show you guys how the, the the phone design hasn't changed, and I know a lot of people out there are most likely who you know who who do have Android most likely have a Samsung phone, and they're great phones. That's not the argument here. I'm just a little bit annoyed that they have zero innovation when it comes to their design philosophy and their basic aesthetics. You know, it's basically let's make the same phone, but it's lighter, it's it's better, it's faster. You know, whatever and it looks the exact same. And I always say this, if someone has to ask you which phone you have, like like nothing irritates me more than when people come up to you and you're like, hey man, is that the S5 or the S6? Or is that the S6 or the S7? And it's gonna be like, dude, if, if no one can tell that you know you have the new phone, if no one can tell that you have an S7, that, that, that you obviously did not innovate enough to di- differentiate your product. But unfortunately, this is the path that Samsung has been on and has continued to be on at this point in time. And uh, we'll see next year if they're going to actually change their design philosophy. Now, it's not all bad. You know, the Samsung Galaxy uh, specs are actually pretty damn good. And, uh, you know, as they normally um, are. So we have a 5.1 inch screen with a, tw- with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. All right. Um, that's basically standard, you know, QHD. Sony tried to push the industry further with a 4K smartphone, but no one could really see the difference between 4K. You know, when the pixel density is so high and the screen is, you know, so small, five and a half inches, 4K isn't really going to help there. They tried, but no one really cared. And people who even tried it said they couldn't even tell the difference, that it was kind of unnecessary. But 2560 by 1440 seems to be a sweet spot. We seem to be really good with that resolution. Um, So it's the same size screen as the Samsung Galaxy uh, S6. Um, So there's there's no bigger difference. It's pretty much the same screen, to be completely honest with you guys. All right. We have 64 or 32 gigabyte storage, uh, onboard storage, excuse me, that's dependent on the region, however. You do have micro SD um, card slots, uh, so that has been a big thing. I know a lot of people were like, you know, they really want a micro SD card slot, so um, there's that. You have a you have a 12 megapixel camera, and uh, that's not really, that's actually kind of low in terms of the megapixels. Now keep in mind, I know a lot of people think the bigger the megapixels, the better the camera is, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, megapixels are odd. Uh, last last year's uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 had a 16 megapixel camera, so the downgrade in megapixels here is an odd decision. But I'm almost uh, thinking that they're probably optimizing for a better camera overall. That the quality and the ca- I'm sure the camera is probably going to do better in low light versus the last one. So don't think that okay, the bigger the megapixels, the better the camera. It really isn't like that. In fact, the more megapixels that you have, the less zoom capabilities that you actually have. So um, that is uh, that is that is worthy to note, all right. But you have a 12 megapixel camera instead of a 16 megapixel camera on the S6. Um, you have a water resistance. It's now IP68 rated, so you can basically, you know, throw this thing in the tub with you, and it would be fine, I guess, if if you're if you're worried about that. I mean, pretty much every phone is a little bit water resistant. I mean, I've had I have my G3 right, and it's been in water before. And the phones are so tightly packed together that water barely gets to the circuits in the first place, um, only under extreme circumstances. But if you like, if, if you if the thing slips in the sink while the water is running, your your phone's not going to not work. It, it, it's fine. It's not going to do anything. All right. You have a three thousand milliamp hour battery versus uh, the twenty five fifty milliamp hour battery on the S six. So you get an upgrade in battery life, but this isn't anything dramatic. In fact, my LG G three had a three thousand milliamp hour battery in it, and I don't know, this is kinda like them catching up. I mean three thousand milliamps isn't like a big deal anymore. It's a it's a pretty standard size all around. Um, but you do have a little bit of an upgrade there. This is a new feature that a lot of things a lot of companies are, are touting. You have an always on display that shows the time, calendar images um from the lock screen and that's pretty much it uh i don't know we we have yet to see how drastic the battery life is going to diminish right now of this always on screen um it being an amoled display from uh samsung 
uh, the pixels on the rest of the phone are pretty much going to turn off and it's only going to highlight that small bit of the screen. So it probably might not affect too much. But this always on display, if you're using like an LCD screen, is probably, you know, not going to be that. It's probably going to drain battery life. And I'm curious to actually see if the always on display does use a little bit more battery than, you know, the previous phones and things like that. You have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor. This is the upgrade to the 810 processor that debuted last year. A lot of people had issues with the, with the 810 and I personally have an issue because my phone, the G3 actually does use the 810 processor. The big issue with the Snapdragon 810 processor was the overheating issues. The processor would get overworked so much and um, basically would not get enough airflow. It, it, it didn't know how to basically cool itself down. And so at times your phone would get super, super, super hot and uh it would be pretty pretty bad you know it, it would pretty pretty much suck your phone like you know freaking be like picking up like a hot potato or something like that so the 820 is their next one it's supposed to fix all those issues it's funny because snap uh qualcomm actually said that it's not our processor it, it wasn't the 810 it was the fact that phone manufacturers pack it so close they're trying to blame it on the phone manufacturers but it wasn't just one manufacturer it was you know pretty much everyone so that is an issue all right now this is this is big if you're into mobile gaming. Um, dedicated gaming features making it easier to record sessions and screenshots. A do not disturb mode that blocks incoming call notifications. That is a big thing because so annoyingly do you get calls when you're playing games and all of a sudden it closes the game application and then you have to you know ignore the call. Then it has to reload the game application. I'm not a big fan of mobile gaming at this point in time. I still think it has a way to go. But um, these are features that are pretty cool. This is basically like adding PlayStation Share feature and all the console sh you know, features to your phone. I mean, even recording sessions, which are pretty freaking awesome, especially if you're a reviewer or something like that, that's going to be pretty cool. You can actually do direct capture recording right from the phone's software. So that's a big plus. And on the color side, it comes in black onyx or gold platinum, and that's pretty much it, all right? So it's nothing dramatic. Like, I would have liked to see a bigger screen, and I would have liked to see, like, a resolution, but, like, a 2560 by 1600 resolution would have been nice. Um, it's nice that they're including micro SD card slot, and I think the battery is removable. I want to say the battery is removable. I'm not exactly sure, though, but one of the big issues that a lot of people have with the S6 was the fact that there was no micro SD card slot, excuse me, and uh, no removable battery. So this case, it's like, oh, sh oh my God, my battery is getting, it's, it's old, it's, it's not being able to hold a charge. Now you can just replace the battery this time around and put a micro SD card slot in. But, so yeah, it, it'd be pretty cool. I, again, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure about the battery thing, but I know that they put a micro SD card slot in. So hopefully that they listened and they actually got the battery thing back um and we can just move on from there all right but in terms of its design it's just it's the same looking phone I, I don't know how anyone's gonna say it looks different i mean it's the same it's basically an s it's basically it's it's an s6 with all the features that they took out in <laughs> that's it's basically what you have here is you have a slightly faster s6 four gigabytes of ram excuse me for the for the s7 so slightly faster galaxy s6 with a micro sd card slot and possibly a removable battery so it's basically like them them fixing the Galaxy S6 and re-releasing it. That's basically what we're getting with the S7. But my overall thoughts are meh. I, I don't see myself going back to a Samsung device until they can innovate on design. I just don't want to feel, I don't want that sense of deja vu. You know, I don't want that sense of, oh, this is just like my S3 that I owned so, so long ago. You know, again, they're great phones but we need more innovation on design before I'm gonna start really looking at them as a serious pickup for me to get, all right? So moving on, uh, LG released, uh, or announced, excuse me, their LG G5, and here we have a dramatic increase in terms of design. Like, the, the, the phone looks drastically different than the LG G4 and the G3. In fact, I was a little bit disappointed with the G4 in terms of its design. It was a good phone. Um, the big touting part, of course, was the camera for that phone. Uh, but again, they, 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 it basically was like a G3. It, lo it looked like a G3, but with like a curve. That's basically what, what it was. And so I was a little bit disappointed in terms of their main design for the for the uh, Galaxy G4, or the Galaxy, the LG G4. But now that we're getting the G5 here, 
uh, it's dramatically, dramatically different. And just looking at the screenshots here, you can see it's a little bit odd. In fact, I'm gonna even I can applaud them. Right, I'm gonna I'm going to applaud um, LG on choosing a drastic design, you know, a different design, and a design that doesn't look anywhere similar to their previous phone. I mean, it's it's rounder. But at the same time, I just don't think it's it's a very attractive looking phone. When I, I look at this phone and there's like parts of it that I like and parts of it that I really think are, are just hideous, all right? The front of the phone reminds me of of a futuristic device that I would see like in a futuristic movie. Like it reminds me of something I would see like in something like Aeon Flux or Steven Spielberg's AI. It's very futuristic looking on the front, right? You have this glass um, or this plastic, excuse me, black glossy panel that kind of goes over the front of the screen. It looks pretty cool. And then, I mean, on the back, it's like a different story. On the back, it's just weird looking. And uh, you have a fingerprint scanner on the back. I wanna say it's a fingerprint scanner. I'm pretty sure that's not a, you know, a, um, a, a, a button. Um, if it is, then you know, then I guess it's a button. But then you also have this weird camera. It's just you have this this weird center hump. It's like this weird hump in the center just for this camera. It just looks really really odd, and I'm not a fan of the design. I I really am not. I think it looks. I think it's 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 drastically different, right? It doesn't look like a G4. It doesn't look like a G3. It doesn't look like any of the galaxy uh, of this. I keep saying galaxy. It doesn't look like any of the LG G series smartphones. It has futuristic design elements, but it's also very, very ugly to say the least. On on uh, through most of the phones, just design aesthetics. I'm just I don't like the way it looks. The icons look rounder. Everything looks rounder. It looks like a children's toy. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like a children's toy. It doesn't even look like a like a smartphone. So anyway, let's go over the specs. All right. Because we do have the specs here, and I'm, again, the, the, I'm going to show you guys, like, they're, they're pretty much downgrading at this point in terms of my opinion. Take a look at this, all right? We have a 5.3 and quad HD IPS display with a 2560 by 1440 pixel resolution and a 554 pixels per inch um, density, all right? It's a down, it's a down uh, grade in terms of screen size, all right? Uh, my G5, my G3, excuse me, had a 5.5 inch 1440p display. The G4 had a 5.5 inch 1440p display. And now we're going back to 5.3 inch 1440p display. Why is it so much smaller? It's a bit odd for me. It's just, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. And, uh, I don't know. I don't want a small, I don't want smaller phones. Like this is just like starting to worry me. Like, are we going to start getting smaller phones, you know? Because I'm a, I'm a guy who I like bigger sized phones. Like I'm actually, I, I'm looking to get, I'm actually going to be getting the uh, the Huawei Nexus 6P in uh, a few weeks, if not a month. And that's a 5.7 inch phone and I've held it at CES. In fact, I've held a Huawei's Mate 8 phone at CES. Now it's a six inch phone and it felt very comfortable in my hands. I'm not a fan of the smaller phones these days, you know, owning a bigger size phone and uh, Yo, this is like a big detractor for me. 5.3 inches is just not, I, 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 I don't care if the resolution is 1440p and it's gonna look sharper because of the higher pixel density along with a smaller screen size. It's just that I don't want a, a smaller size phone. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, 0.2 inches isn't that big of a deal. But when you're watching movies and it like, it, it, it is a pretty, it is a pretty substantial difference. You know, it's, it's not, it's something that you're going to notice, especially the feel of the phone. It's going to feel a lot smaller in your hands. All right. So on the back, we have a 16 megapixel, 78 degree wide uh, angle lens uh, ca camera that can uh, record 4k video. You also have an eight megapixel front. Oh, you have two, you have two cameras actually. Okay. Wait, let's, let's read this. 16 megapixel, 78 degree wide, and then eight megapixel, 138 degree field wide rear camera that can record 4K video. So we have two, I guess that's why on the on the back of the phone, it, you have two basically cameras on the back. One's eight megapixels and one's 16 megapixels, but each of them have a wide field of view. So I don't understand the logic behind that. It's a little bit odd, um, but I mean, I guess it allows for wider field of view, you know, here we, I mean, two cameras for a total of 24 megapixels. 
they can record 4k video all right on the front you have an 8 megapixel front camera that's pretty standard these days another snapdragon 820 processor an adreno 4 uh, 530 gpu which i think is the same thing as the galaxy s7 so the new 530 series from adreno um pretty cool you have a removable 28 milliamp hour battery and again why are we doing a downgrade in battery the LG G3 had a 3000 milliamp hour battery and I want to say the G4 also had a 3000 milliamp hour battery. So why are we going down again? It's like smaller screen, smaller battery. What's with the smaller form size? So 2800 milliamp hour battery. I, I, I don't understand that, you know, USB type C though. We have four gigabytes of Ram, 32 gigabytes internal with up to two terabytes of expandable storage via micro SD. Okay. And it is a fingerprint scanner on the back uh, home button. So that is confirmed for a fingerprint scanner. So I just, I, the big thing about this phone is that you can basically take it apart. In fact, the bottom portion of the phone comes out and you can replace the battery that way. They call it a modular design basically. So you can like attach a bigger backside so it makes it easier to shoot videos. You can attach different lenses to like the camera and things like that. So you can basically take it apart and attach different things. In fact, this reminds me a lot of the Microsoft Xbox One Elite controller. It's basically the same thing, but on the phone, you can take apart different things and things like that. But that design is really, it's just, it, it, it's weird. It's, it's really weird, it's foreign, it's alien. And I appreciate that they went for a different look entirely, but at the same time, I just don't think it's attractive. I really, I really don't. I, I don't think it's an attractive design. It looks odd, just just really, really odd. And I'm, I'm just not a fan of this design. So the G5, while I can appreciate their design innovations, it's not a, it's not a pick for me. The, the fact that you get a smaller screen and a smaller battery packed in this really odd design just doesn't do it for me. So uh, this is not this is not a phone that I'm really interested in either. Um, it just looks odd. But let me know what you guys think. I, there's I have a feeling we get a lot, a lot of split you know people who think that the phone looks really cool, and then a lot of people who think the phone just looks really ugly. <laughs> so moving on, we have the uh, HTC had a conference and uh, they did not unveil their HTC One M10. Uh, the rumors were that they were going to hold off the One M10 until a later date. And uh, the CEO actually came out and said that they're really focusing on VR th right now. And that the the One M10 series is not going to be like a big, it's not, it, they're not, it's basically like, they basically said that what's more important for them right now, their priority is the VR rather than phones these days. So that's what they're focusing on. The HTC Vive, all right? Somehow HTC managed to basically overdo the price for this thing. Like how, when people came out in, in, in just in outrage over the Oculus Rift being $600, HTC comes out and says, ours is $800. <laughs> Who's gonna buy this thing for $800? And on top of that, it's an ugly looking VR headset. Look how awful it looks. You have these weird pins on the freaking thing and the camera on the bottom. It just looks awful. It looks really, 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 really bad. And you have these weird controllers, which are like circle motion pads that you can use to control these boxes that sense the movement and things like that. I mean, what the hell? That's all I have to say is like, what the hell? $800 for this thing. It's an ugly headset. You have these weird controllers. Who is this thing for? I mean, no one's, I don't, I, no gamer is gonna sit here and say, well, I can choose between the Oculus Rift at $600, which we know is mainly for games. They marketed it as a gaming device, or I can go with the HTC Vive and it's a vr headset i don't really know what they marketed it for but it's an extra 200 dollars. i get these weird ass controllers i i don't understand i mean i really don't the htc vibe looks hideous in my opinion i could have tested it out at ces but there was a long line ah uh, it just looks it looks bad to me and i don't know why it's 800 dollars. i really don't like that that is if you thought the oculus rift was expensive i mean and it just surprises me because you could take a look at the Oculus Rift and people saying we're in outrage over the $600 price tag and you went ahead and made it $200 more expensive. <laughs> Who's going to buy this? What consumer is going to look at this and buy this device? Really? It looks awful. And no one voted it, by the way, when I had my, my Twitter poll, no one voted for the HTC Vive whatsoever. So I guess no one cares. 
So this thing is practically going to be dead on arrival for, for all I care. I mean, I really just, uh, looks bad. All right, so we're going to skip. We're going to move on from that. All right, we also had um, the uh, H HP, excuse me, also released their uh, Elite X3, or they announced it. This is a Windows phone. Um, I really don't care. I, I don't think anyone here is going to be looking at HP for mobile phones, <laughs> to be completely honest. But P HP is saying it's basically like your computer on the go. It has like the same features. It's running the Windows device. So, I mean, that's cool. It's, it's the Elite X3, so it's really... I mean, they had the Elite 2 earlier, and I didn't hear anyone who really got it, so I doubt anyone's going to really get this. Um, so we have the Elite 3, big deal, whatever. And then that's pretty much it. I mean, there are other small announcements going around, but they weren't as nearly important to talk about. All right, so overall, I mean, I have to say I'm pretty, I'm pretty disappointed, you know? Samsung's Galaxy continues to be just the same-looking phone and small design in it, or I should say small you know, uh, increases in power levels and things like that. So whoopee, uh, LG G5 looks odd and also takes a back, a back step in terms of some specs. Uh, the HTC Vive is an overpriced, ugly headset that I don't know who's, who, it, who it's marketed for, to be completely honest. And then we have the, uh, oh, and by the way, I also, I also didn't mention this, but the HTC also announced that their One X9 is coming to America big deal i mean <laughs> really so i think we're all looking forward to the m10 but even then there was a leaked image showing the m10's design and it looks the exact it looks like similar to like the galaxy s series like it has it has a home button in the center it, it looks the exact same phone so i'm not even looking forward to that anymore and uh, we have h we have hp releasing their elite x3 so that was basically what came out. Um, I was overall pretty disappointed to be completely honest you know i mean uh, we didn't we saw some major design changes with the g5 but again you know not really powerful specs at all so let me know what you guys think uh, what was your big highlight for the show if you guys are interested and uh you know for, for those of you who actually care about smartphones and stuff are you picking up the s7 are you picking up the g5 are you waiting to the htc m10 codename perfume are you ser seriously considering the htc vibe for some reason or, or are you actually interested in the HP Elite X3? Let me know what you guys are interested in and uh, what you think, and I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.